Welcome everybody. Today we would like to show you a left bundle bunch area pacing case of a 69 year old patient. Uh, with indication for pacing is uh, ablative pace, assistant, persistent uh, atrial fibrillation. I'd like to show you the intrinsic ECG. This is atrial fibrillation. Current duration is 80 milliseconds. Um, then we looked for the his potential where we're going to fixate the lead. You screw from the RV side to the LV side of the septum. Yes. Um, this is the ECG. We see a nice W pattern with the notch uh, at the nadir of the QRS complex in lead V1. We have a positive complex in lead 2. We have a negative complex in lead 3. So this is a nice position to start screwing the lead. Then we screw the lead towards the left endocardium of the septum and here is a, a first fixation bead. We already have an, uh, an R prime um, and then we start pacing and we see uh, a large R amplitude, R prime amplitude indicating that we've reached the left bundle branch area and when we stop pacing to to see the intrinsic uh, uh, signals, we also see a nice, clear, sharp left bundle branch potential. Let me zoom in. We have a nice, clear, sharp left bundle branch potential with an uh, LBB potential to cure as complex interval around 25 milliseconds. If we measure the interval from the uh, left bundle branch potential to our wave pipe, our wave peak in lead V6, it's about 60 milliseconds and if we start pacing again you see yes, that this interval is similar indicating that we indeed capture the left bundle branch in this patient. Um, when we start changing the output, in this case we uh, we first check the threshold and then increase the output again we see a nice transition from selective left bundle branch pacing on the left part of the screen to non-selective left bundle branch pacing on the right part of the screen. And what we can nicely see is when we look at the uh, his bundle, um, his bundle uh, lead, we see a uh, ventricular EGM that is, that is uh, distinct from the pacing artifact. When we look on the right, two beats, we see non-selective left bundle branch pacing where this ventricular EGM is not distinct from the pacing spike. Furthermore, in lead V6 in red, we see uh, uh, an RS pattern of the QRS complex, which is uh, a bit less in, uh, in non-selective left bundle branch pacing. And when we measure quickly the intervals again, we see that this interval from uh, basic spike to V6, RV5 is similar between selective and non-selective, which we also expect, of course. Um, special about this case is that we implant the pacemaker and also do the AV uh, node ablation in the same procedure. So we start ablating um, and here we can see that we have complete block. Let me zoom out. We have complete block, and the pacemaker takes over with a nice uh, narrow QRS complex. We can show it on the fluoroscopy, where we can see the uh, right atrial lead and the left bundle branch uh, lead already in place, and we have the uh, ablation catheter, um, of which we made the AV block. So after the, uh, uh, after the ablation, the patient is permanently paced. We have a nice narrow QRS complex. And now I'm going to show you another transition of selective to non-selective left bundle branch pacing. Uh, the 
nice thing about this case, case is that we have an, um, a decapolar, a temporary decapolar catheter in place on the LV side of the septum. This is for study purposes. And what we can see is that on the left side, the left bead is selective left bottom branch pacing. Please note the uh, ventricular EGM distinct from the pace spike again. And on LVS1-2, there is a clear, sharp potential, uh, his potential between the pacing spike and the QRS complex, which is not evident in non-selective left on the range pacing. So here we have two uh, criteria for uh, for its distinction of selective and non-selective left on the branch pacing. That's all, that's what we wanted to show you of a, of a case, a blade and pace in one session with left on the branch pacing.